What was that noise? That was the sound of this cup going against the microphone. It's a Joshua Tree Tour 2017 cup. Fantastic. Cool. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And just keeping it uh, keeping it real. How's the weather? Um, <laughs> it's, it's been hot. It's about 93 degrees today. Although this is the last and hottest day of the heat wave that has enveloped Europe since apparently I arrived. Well, I'm just happy that we could join you at peak miserable. I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to uh, this ending. Yeah. So you're back in Sweden now. You're gone from, mm-hmm. from yep. Germany. Did we actually do a show from Germany? I can't even remember. Did we ever do one? Because I know you, what, what day did your water, uh, your water heater that burst? That was Tuesday. We, did so we didn't Wednesday. do it that day. So we must have done one Wednesday. Yeah. And then we didn't do one yesterday. Yep. Because you were traveling again. And so here we are. Yeah. Yep. And... Um, not that travel gets the best of us, but Paul wrote up earlier today that Windows 7 is getting a price hike. <laughs> I just wanted to reiterate how tired I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, we were coming home on the train and Mary Jo had uh, Skyped me and said, hey, I'm sure you already know this, but you wrote Windows 7 a bunch of times and you met Windows 10. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't actually know that. <laughs> so I asked you and Mahedi if somebody could please correct my egregious error yep but uh for those who are curious if you're on the enterprise side of life or the on-premises if either of those words make sense to you um expect mm-hmm. to pay just a little bit more well 10 percent more if you're in the office world uh starting with 2019 products yeah you know the funny thing about this is i actually spent a bunch of time researching two things because i really don't understand the, the answers to these questions which are mm-hmm. what is the difference between windows 10 not Windows 7, Enterprise, and Windows 10 Enterprise E3. And what was, or I guess is currently, the pricing of Windows 10 Enterprise as compared to E3? Um, Mm. I was able to find the pricing on E3, and I know that as part of this price hike, the price of non-E3 Enterprise is going up to the same price as E3, but I don't know what the current price is. Yeah, and, and even, so that's that's a loaded question within itself, because even if you found a publicly listed price point, um, any company yeah. that's buying more than five licenses is probably getting a volume discount. So it's not truly like, okay, it's seven, actually it might be $7. I, I remember writing about this at some point, but whatever that figure is, most companies are not paying yeah. that. They're paying something less than that because they're buying in volume or it's bundled or everything else. So Right, 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 right. Okay. Well... It wasn't the biggest mistake I made in that article. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what happens when you write when you're in a heat stroke, you know? Yeah, I'm lucky it wasn't just a, a, a random characters. Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of nods off at the end where it just ends in babble. <laughs> it's just like literally there's no period. It's like mid-sentence just ends. Yeah, it's, it's happened. I've, ri- mm-hmm. I've written posts before, like I'll come back. This I haven't done this recently, but yeah. come back from the bar. And you're like, you know what, I'm not going to go to bed yet. I'm going to write something. Fortunately, I never really publish it, but then I wake up in the morning thinking it's a done post just ready to go out, and you look at it, and you're like, ooh. <laughs> it's ooh like, did that's a... fall asleep on the keyboard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the, the, the cat walked across it. Mm-hmm. Um, but something that was, I think, announced today, which I've already, I'm going to try out starting next week. Okay. Google Assistant, they now have a, they have a routines feature. Yes, they, scheduled routines. Yeah, they're now doing the scheduled routines where I have I had yet to find a true assistant that every day at eight fifteen would send me the the traffic report yeah. reliably to my daughter's school. Um, I, I so the reason. To, yep. Go I'm ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, the reason I didn't write about this yet is I didn't find an official Google announcement. I, it is available. I, I, I and I think yep. Android Police was the place I saw this, but um, yeah, this is. Um, this is a big deal. So, yeah, yeah. that's interesting yeah. that you caught on that. This is a really big one. Yep. And so I have it scheduled for – it's a little hard to kind of figure out, actually, uh, especially on iOS. What mm-hmm. I did was I just set uh, a traffic thing. Like I just said, send me the traffic every day at 8.15 a.m. And mm-hmm. then it, it, it creates the little thing. And then at the bottom, there's a button that says 8.15 a.m. And I tapped it, and it turned blue. And I'm hoping that that means that it's coming every day during the week at 8.15 because the AI couldn't figure out that despite that uh, forceful handling, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going the same place every morning. So, 
Yeah, I'm going to play with this too. Um, hmm. All right, maybe I'll just do a every day at whatever time just so yeah. I can see what happens. Yeah, yeah interesting. So I'm hoping that's going to work out. But uh, mm-hmm. things that aren't working out, Paul, are Intel. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, I, it, they, I, I don't, I guess it wasn't a record quarter, but they are, they had an amazing quarter. They beat their um, year over year profits and revenues by dramatic numbers. I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head. I think profits were up 37% mm-hmm. and revenue by something like 17%. So they had a blockbuster quarter and, you know, as far as like PC chips go, I mean, honestly, they've been beating the market in the sense that they've experienced growth in sales to that market at a time when that market wasn't actually growing, which, you know, is a little bit hard to explain, but we see Microsoft does the same thing. Um, it might have something to do with the fact that um, they're selling more chips to the premium gaming part of the market, mm-hmm. which is, of course, where their strength lies anyway. So that could be it. But it's it's interesting. Like, they've always done a really good job. But there are a number of factors weighing on the Intel and um among them is uh, I love that somebody coined the phrase uh, the 10 nanometer debacle. <laughs> you know, I didn't oh, come gosh. up with that one myself, but you know, this notion that Intel has been promising to make this technological transition to a, a more efficient, well, uh, to a new manufacturing process that makes more efficient chips, you know, 10 nanometer versus 14 nanometer for years. And they keep delaying it quarter by quarter, a year, half year by half year. So uh, the latest word was that it was going to happen by the beginning of uh, 2019 in volume. Mm-hmm. And now they're saying the end of 2019 in volume and not until 2020 at the earliest for the servers, which, of course, in some ways is even more important when you think about it from energy efficiency and so forth. Sure. Um, and I guess I didn't put this in my own article. I saw this later, but apparently AMD is make, making inroads in the data center as well, which is a huge problem for Intel because mm-hmm. this is one of their, their few uh, strong, uh, strongholds. In fact, they arguably have a better monopoly in servers than they do in desktop PCs or just PCs on the good news front Qualcomm also released their earnings this week uh, Qualcomm has had a couple of issues lately I haven't really covered any of this stuff like they dropped their bid for NXP and uh, I, apparently uh, the way they said this it's kind of unclear but I, I believe that in, Apple basically contacted them and said yeah we're not buying any more your modem so in the next generation of iPhones they are not going to use Qualcomm modems meaning that the that Intel potentially will have that entire market to itself unless Apple's able to source a second vendor. Um, the irony there is twofold. A, Intel isn't exactly well known for its mobile prowess, and those chips are actually not nearly as fast as the Qualcomm ones. And the second thing is that as a result of that, um, I, Apple actually slows down the Qualcomm modems and the iPhones that do use those modems to match this, the slower speed of the Intel modems. Because they want every iPhone to be identical. Yep. <laughs> Which is just like so goofy. It's crazy. Yep. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, in, I think in, what Intel needs is strong growth in non PC, non data center markets. And, and like Qualcomm, they are developing special chips for a variety of markets, you know, Internet of Things and, and uh, in, in the mobile world as, as well. And honestly, I don't think any of these things are huge markets per se, but. The, the mobile chips, I think, could be for them if they could get this right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's potentially a big deal. I mean, they only sell a couple iPhones a year. So uh, if yeah, it yeah. does hold out to be true, <laughs> that'll be. Yep. Um, yep. That'll be big yeah, news. Hundred, hundred, I think the, the word you were looking for, the phrase you were looking for, was hundreds of millions yeah. <laughs> a year. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, mm-hmm. that actually got me thinking earlier today because I was reading some of this as, as it was coming across the wire. And I tweeted out a question. Uh, Microsoft actually makes a significant number of chips themselves. I never really thought of them as, hey, a, a chip manufacturer, but they mm-hmm. really are. Uh, I mean, they yeah. have the HoloLens. They have the one in the Surface. They've got Xbox is kind of arguable because it's whatever. It's AMD, but it's theirs or whatever. Um, yep. They've got stuff in the Surface. And um, the other thing that Data I had learned was that stuff, for yeah. the uh, upcoming Scarlet Cloud box, the streaming box, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to have their own silicon in it as well. Yeah. No, this is this is the big push. I mean, um, I had written something about this sometime in the past year, but uh, Apple kind of got this ball rolling where they have lots of custom chipsets that they make. I mean, obviously, they also make the A-series processors, but increasingly, there are these custom chips in their devices uh, that are Apple-designed. And Microsoft's doing the same thing, like you said, the Pixel Sense uh, chip that's in some of the newer 
Surface devices is a good example. Um, I think Azure Sphere would fall into this uh, category in the sense that it's kind of a Microsoft, yep. at least a Microsoft co-design kind of thing. And they've got the FPGAs it, as well. I forgot about those. Yeah, it's yep. a big one. So, yeah, I mean, it's the Alan K thing all over again. You know, if you're serious about software, you have to make your own hardware. And I, I, you know, the world Alan K was probably envisioning when he said that in the '80s or whatever was a much simpler world than the one of today. But um, I do find it really interesting that all the, and Google does the same thing too, right? And Google does the same thing on the cloud mm-hmm. data center side as Microsoft too. Um, these guys who are you know known as software makers are increasingly making hardware, and especially specialized components for their systems that kind of dif- differentiate them from the competition. Yeah, I've been trying to figure this out, and I know you told me how to do it, and I can never remember how to do it. What is? Mm-hmm. How do you make the Chromeless? web app in chrome i thought it was under oh. more tools yeah you know it's um it's weird because they um they keep changing it so i might have a different version of chrome than you do so let me just look at it real quick it's it the, the language is going to vary depending on the kind of web site you're looking at mm-hmm. but yeah it is more um yeah more tools so if it's just a normal web page it's yeah. create shortcut do you see that there yeah and then when, the, let me just see what it says. Yeah, so when the little create shortcut window comes up, you want to make sure it says open as a window. Now, uh, the other thing, go. yeah, um, to find these things later, I think you go, let me just see what this does. Is it like Chrome apps? Like Chrome, you get a Chrome colon slash slash, I think it's apps or app, apps. Let me try apps. Yeah, that every, assuming you're signing into Chrome with your, uh, you, you know, your um, Google account, Every time you do what you just did, that thing will be in the apps list. So you can go to a different computer and find it there. And you can actually change it there. So if you screw it up, you can right-click it and check open as a window from there. And then you can launch it as a window, like a Chromeless window. I can explain why later I need that, but I cannot do that quite yet. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Very mysterious. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. Um, everybody can calm down. It's not all that exciting. Okay. But I, w- I was just playing with something. Um, speaking of playing with something, Paul, how's uh, how's how, how are you dealing with no Call of Duty? Oh, <laughs> it's not it's not really a problem. Um, interesting. My, my son uh, is here through Sunday, and he brought he has a gigantic seventeen uh, inch HP gaming laptop that he actually travels with, which is really funny. Um, he I I don't think I told you this. He on the plane ride out, he opened this thing up, took out um, some. Nintendo Switch controllers, the little mm-hmm. ones, like blue and blue and red. And I guess it makes like a game controller or something. I don't know if he was used. I think he was. I think they were together. I don't remember exactly. They were tiny though, and he was playing a game on the plane, like on, with like. I guess you connect it with Bluetooth or something. Um, and he's been playing Fortnite and um, a game called The Forest and hmm. Overwatch. Overwatch. Yeah. Yeah. Overwatch is a good one. Yeah. Um, you know the funny thing is I. I literally play Call of Duty every single day when I'm home, and I do it. Um, you know, there's kind of a schedule that I kind of have. Like um, in the morning when I'm done with working and writing, and I kind of clean it for the podcast, and it's like quarter of eleven. I'll play it before we start the podcast, and then I'll play again until we eat lunch, and then I go off and do other things. But um, I don't. You know, it's weird. Like I, I something about traveling. Like I just have. It's just a different schedule, and it's um, it's a different kind of day. You know, people, someone had asked me about that, and that asked Paul thing this week, you know, like, what, what, well, A, why am I not mm-hmm. just taking a vacation, which is kind of a complex uh, answer. But, you know, because I'm six hours ahead of the United States, the East Coast of the United States now, you know, I can get up in the morning, I can work for, and I did this today, actually, where I wrote a couple of articles, and then we go out and we go into the city, and, and we can if we come back for three, which is the typical schedule, that's like 9 a.m. back home, and then I can work for a couple hours, two, three hours. Yep more and then dinner happens and whatever and the podcast because of the timing like this one is 1 a.m or 1 p.m rather uh et it's 7 p.m here when we do that but that's fine it's like as you can see it is like noon here yeah because <laughs> you know stockholm um and then windows weekly is at two so that's like eight am i getting this right yeah eight to ten and that's fine it's it's fine and it's still full light too you know when that's done too but um yeah it's it's kind of a it's almost like a half day mm-hmm. schedule in a way you know yeah. But it kind of focuses me more because the truth is, if you think about like, I don't, I, I probably do sit in front of the computer for eight hours a day. There's, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on and you know this, I mean, but people watching this might not understand this completely. Like I'm not just like literally typing all day long. Right. Um, you know, you, but like I got the, you know, for example, that Lenovo smart display came 
in the mail the day before we left for Germany. And so part of that day is you spend the time setting it up, taking photos and taking notes and everything. And that kind of stuff is happening all the time. Like I'll have, when I'm home, I'll have like a laptop over, maybe I'm running battery life tests on it or whatever. And I've got all this different, you know, stuff going on. And so when I'm here, I don't have any of that other stuff going on, but I probably most days have the opportunity at least to sit in front of the computer Mm -hmm. and write, you know, for roughly the same amount of time, uh, roughly. Um, I am away. I mean, so I, I usually off. I'm not really taking like an actual, like here's the week I'm off, but I took some time off this week already. There were a couple of days there uh, with the Berlin and traveling. It was kind of tough. And then when my friends come next week, I think I'll probably take a day or two off, but you know, whatever. Yeah, there's a anyway, question guess, from the chat room. Maybe you can clarify mm-hmm. here. The controllers yep. that your son uses, mm-hmm. what are, are those actual ones from Nintendo or they like it? Somebody was asking because they're interested in them. Yeah, he was using the Nintendo Switch controllers. I could ask him, actually. Hey, who's uh, is? Hey, babe, yeah. could you ask Mark to come down here for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him it's time sensitive. We're on a live podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Come here. First of all, check out his new haircut. Look at him. Look, look wow. how smelt he is. High and tight. Like it. Mm-hmm. Looking good, mm-hmm. Mark. Military. I like it. Okay. So when you were on the plane, I saw you were playing a game and you had those Nintendo Switch controllers. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was that? Well, those are just literally controllers for the Nintendo Switch, but I was using like an emulator to play like Nintendo 64 memes and just use the uh, We can't hear. Controllers to play the games because it has all the same buttons. So it was a Nintendo Switch controller. Were you were they were they plugged together or were you using them separately? How were you doing it though? I was doing it separate. Separate. So he had him. You can do it both ways. He was actually running an emulator for the Nintendo 64. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, what's it called? The emulator. Yeah. Like dolphin. Or dolphin. He's hmm. he lives in a hacker universe that I don't even understand. But yeah, actually, he was playing Crash Bandicoot. That's what I. That's what I saw. Because I looked over at that game and I was like, I've seen that game before. Isn't that a PlayStation game? Yeah, I thought so too. It was, but it was Crash Bandicoot. Maybe he was playing some. Maybe was, he has different things going on. But he did play Crash Bandicoot. There you go. Uh, yep. There you go. What do you got on the agenda for the weekend, Paul? Before we <laughs> shut her down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm so tired. We had like this awful day of travel. Yet, well, not, it was just a long day of travel. Like we didn't mm-hmm. get back here till one o'clock in the morning. Which, by oh. the way, we did find out it does in fact get dark here briefly, and it happens at about one o'clock in the morning. Fantastic. Um, yeah, that was nice. Um, no, I just more of the same. I'll, I'll get a little bit of writing done. I've been actually, I've worked on the book a little bit as well. So I actually did update the book this week. I'll probably update it again before the end of the trip too. So I don't know. What about you? Uh, well, I'm going to go see Tim. Um, I'm going to yeah. see Tim today and I'm definitely going to see him on Sunday because if he takes my belt and ties, I'm going to need them. <laughs> That's so. really funny. Um, and then my birthday's on Monday and my wife and I are going out, oh. I think Saturday night for, uh, some, I don't know, time without the kid. I don't know what we're doing. I do have a birthday present, uh, for you from Marcus. Um, but that will have to wait until after I get home. Ruh row. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not a thousand crickets because that would be, well, I have to fly with it. So we have to assume it's not explosive and or something that would violate like an aviation safety law of some kind. <laughs> so there- there is an upper bound on the dangerousness of this item. At I'm least like, we know. It's like I've turned into a drug mule. You know, could you fly to a foreign co- country with this package, deliver it, and then come home with something else? I need you to swing by Nicaragua on your way home. Can you do that for me? <laughs> exactly. Oh, speaking of which. <laughs> Go on. Um, as you know, and as you are as well, huge fan of Havana Club actual Cuban rum. You have my attention. There is. There is a version of it here I've never seen before. It's in the house. It's a clear version. I think it's mm. called Blanco. I can't remember the exact name. But basically, when you think about rum, there's usually like a golden version that's aged in a cask that has something. You know, just the wood the, the, the wood of it, I guess, is what colors it, kind of that golden color. And then there's a silver rum, which is aged in a um, like a metal barrel, a metal mm-hmm. container. So I, that's what this must be. But I've never seen this before. So I will have a full review of this product um, Sometime in the next couple of hours. I was going to say, have you informed the uh, house owners that that bottle may, in fact, be empty by the time they get back? Well, actually, so <laughs> my wife uh, uh, verified today that it is in the store. So we can uh, safely open it now. Oh, that is good. Mm-hmm. That is good. Well, 
um, other than me playing a terrible golf game yesterday. I, this is that's what I did. And that's what it's, fish, it's golf like fishing, like you know, a bad day golfing is still better than a good day work. Oh, absolutely, kind of absolutely is. Absolutely is. All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back probably on a scattered schedule next week as Paul's traveling. Um, I know it's my birthday on Monday. I don't know if I'm even working or what I'm doing. My wife is planning something, but I don't know what it is. And so uh, with that, folks, have yourselves a wonderful weekend, and we'll catch you right back here next time on First Ring Daily. Whoops. I hit the wrong button.